I'm Charlie Toprek and today we're in our Bamberger Strasse office here in Germany, Nuremberg. I've heard that our UX and UI teams are creating some really cool content and I'm eager to find out what it is. So follow me and let's go and see what they're up to. Hmm, where are they? And then we go fast, fast forward, right? From there. All right, so I did the where are they. Hey, I think I found them. Marcus, how's it going, sir? Ready? Everything ready, yeah, everything yeah. ready. Look at you, you've got the microphone as well. I'm sitting doing everything properly today. <laughs> so we've heard that the UX and UI team here at GFK are making some really cool content. Just yep. came in to find out what it's all about and hoping you could give us a little bit of an insight. So, so hi, um, my name is Marcus Knight. I'm the lead, uh, current design lead for GFK. Um, we, we build on a lot of applications, uh, mobile apps. Uh, we're setting a design direction for GFK. And um, yeah, this is this is our space. This is where Welcome. the magic happens. This is where the magic happens. Yeah. Nice. And and who are your team? Ah, so here we have Julian. Don't be shy. Say something. <laughs> Hi, everybody. I'm Julian. Also a UX designer here. Hi. My name is Janine, and I'm also a UX designer. Nice. So um. What, what are you guys working on at the moment that's you know really cool? What would you like to scream and shout about? Maybe something recent or maybe something you've just finished? Uh, I'll let the stars do it. <laughs> Which one? Oh, that's the question I've been asking all day. <laughs> he, he tells me, choose your favourite and, and, and go for that. That's the bad one. That's, that's, that's the bad one, okay. Yeah, so I'm working on uh, parts of the data visualisation. That's a topic that's coming up. We have to bring in some consistency across all our products. Will be exciting times, yeah. So, what what are you doing for those particular projects? I remember a, a conversation or a talk that you actually did at the We Create Summit, and you mentioned about how um, user experience is very vital to everything that you guys create, and you're always creating with the customer in mind. So, w what have you been working on specifically on on one of those products? Uh, I'm working mostly on the prototypes to really give our developers some kinds of guidance of how the whole thing is going to look and work. Um, not just how it looks, but also how it works. I think that's a big topic here that we have to differentiate between what is UX and what is UI. Easy to use, that's the key <laughs> factor to do. What kind of toolings are you using to help you to, to achieve these, these creations? So we're basically using Sketch as a, yeah, as a visualization, also prototyping tool, and um, together with the Envision app to get those prototypes clickable and usable and also testable. And and one more as well. Um, so, traditional, believe it or not, uh, pen and paper. <laughs> yeah, most important tool ever. You can use it anywhere. You don't need a, uh, any battery power to use it. You just go whatever. So, uh, some of the examples we have here with uh, our design principles. Uh, this helps to uh, help us to align how we design our products. That we're all following the same uh, creative direction. For example, uh, one of my favorite um, principles is solve real problems. So, if you just zoom into this picture right here you can see uh, this the, the, this is actually a pizza holder for a pizza slice and uh, millions of these are actually sold and built and I, I love to have this as an example and I think it's a good example for everyone to see that you know you can actually design bad products you know if they're not validated properly so uh, that's a personal favorite of mine and be consistent so similar to what Julian and Janine were just talking about uh, we want to make sure that our products are consistent across our portfolio so Marcus, what would you say is the importance of UX to GFK as a whole? Um, we have a lot of really good ideas like going around in GFK, uh, but it doesn't necessarily mean a good idea makes a good product for customers because they, they might actually not even need it. So I think UX is great at connecting the dots between uh, the reality, uh, the fantasy and, and you know, what really needs to be done. With the engineers probably keen to just create products and get them out to market as quickly as possible, mm -hmm. do, what challenges do you guys find as a UX team when it comes to collaborating with the wider business and challenging them on, on their designs and on their approaches? Yeah. Any of you want to jump in? <laughs> you are in the, in the mic, so... <laughs> You're all in this together. Yeah. I guess UX is kind of like the, the cross between everything and it's always a fight. 
in, in some way because you have to you have to talk to product which kind of they want a lot of stuff from the application then you have the developers they kind of want it in the easiest fastest way done and we the UX team obviously want it in the best way for the user to be usable with all that information that you still can read it that it's not too much information on the page so it's kind of uh, yeah we are in a crossroad between all these different um, departments and we are trying to to really bring the user back to the focus. I think GFK hasn't traditionally, I know you guys are doing a lot of great work, but GFK hasn't traditionally been known for its UX and its design capabilities. What are you guys doing to challenge that for the outside world? We're doing this by uh, one product owner, one product manager at a time. So what I mean by that is it's about educating each individual in organisation about how UX is, how it's worked, how it's perceived, and it's about changing that perception. So it is a lot of work because you find that you're repeating yourself quite a lot of times and it's fine because we understand that people only retain information as and when it's needed. So we understand that we have to, we have to stay with this process until it's internalised a bit more. So what are, you, what are you most proud of in the last six months? I think we're most proud of, uh, I think, the design team in terms of how we've come together. Uh, we started off, there, wasn't, there was maybe one, two designers, uh, it was quite fragmented. Um, then we came in, we came together, we do uh, uh, quarterly design sessions where we collaborate and meet up with other design agencies and we learn, learn from each other's mistakes, learn each other's techniques, etc. But just the whole process of how the team has come together, you know, we actually go out for beer now. So my first few months in Germany I was like, how come you guys don't ever go out for drinks? And uh, uh, just because of these workshops we do, we actually spend time with each other. We have dinner, we talk about life, etc. I think that's my most proudest moment. I know you guys might have different, different uh, views, but for me, that was really good. Yeah, I mean, I agree. Um, we are in the midst of also creating kind of a team together. I mean, we started off very separate, separately. I think, especially in UX, it, a lot of the work is done in, in a dialogue, when you talk to people, when you're not sitting at your desk by yourself and trying to solve problems. Um, it's a lot easier if you have somebody to talk to and then really go forward with that person. That's pretty cool. We are growing together as a team and we are collaborating wherever we can. So it's really was a good point. It's, it's still a pro progress and it's good to see how this is yeah, being developed and it's going together. It sounds like you guys have spent uh, a lot of time not only focusing on your creations but focusing on creating your team and getting to know each other better which is obviously paying dividends to the work that you're now putting out there for the wider business. What kind of personalities, what kind of skill sets do you look for to come in and, and complement you guys as a creative force? I think the skills I, I always look for first is, uh, is personality, your know, attitude towards work. So. Uh, it's one thing to have the skills, but if, if you don't have the attitude to you know, want to work as a cohesive team, uh, to just get along with guys, um, if things are getting hard, are you persistent enough to, to, to push through these challenges? So that's, for me, that's the, the main thing for me. And obviously it's, the, uh, it's more the theory side behind the user experience. Can you clearly articulate the process of going from low fidelity to high fidelity? So what I mean for, by that is producing designs that are they're very minimalistic and they, they articulate the, um, the solution and then the next stage is coming into the design where you add the paints, the colours and all the bells and whistles etc. Um, so those are the main skills I look for. Uh, I mean front end development skills, is it's good to have a basic understanding. Janine's a bit of a nerd so she can actually develop. I can develop just a little bit, so can uh, Julian who's into animation. Uh, a lot of the guys in London as well. They're also quite uh, multi-talented as well in terms of they do a lot of the skills required in, in UX. Because traditionally, UX designers pretty much focus on the, the how in terms of this is the functionality of the product, um, but then they don't necessarily go into the area of this is how it looks So when you add the design on top. So I, I look for a different array of skills. Correct me if I'm wrong, anybody. <laughs> So I'm um, just looking around at the UI UX hub here and I'm seeing loads of cool pictures here on, on the walls and funny designs and bike helmets and bikes and, and, and all sorts. What do you guys do to keep yourself creative? Maybe there's a secret, maybe there's somewhere you go on a Friday. How to keep the creative juices fl flowing? Oh, you want to start to this one? 
Jelaine, I'm always curious. Yeah, for me it's basically um, living in the internet. So, <laughs> so you're, you're following different design sources, clicking on this article, read through this, going to the next one. So it's basically everything that comes up to your, mm, yeah, your basic search on the internet or just going there or even Instagram. <laughs> so just those, those little resources where I um, get my inspiration from. And it's not only UX, it's also animation, it is um, basic graphic design, it is almost everything. And also just talking to, to different people. So everyone has their own problems with some apps, with some even some normal products to, to use. So and it's really just good to, to hear how let's call it everyday people use products. So you get into the mind um, and stepping a little bit back from, from your point of view for certain things. So I get inspiration from everybody. So the conversations that they just randomly have, the little moans and groans about, uh, we won't mention, but uh, <laughs> whatever issues that we all get in our everyday jobs. Um, and I kind of have a curse, a gift and a curse in terms of I'm a very detail irritated person. So uh, even the cameras that you guys are pointing at me now, I'm thinking, how could we use it in our own approach? How can it help us uh, with our creativity here? So for, it, for me, it's about disciplining the, the ideas and the, the, the fantastic um, approaches that I want to take. It's, I really have to discipline that and not go to these guys and go, hey, what do you think? Because I really have to respect their time. Um, so I'm here for these guys and they're not here for me that way around. So, so yeah. Yeah, my inspiration is just everywhere out there. <laughs> yeah, I mean, same here. Inspiration can be found anywhere and at any time. Um, what I, for instance, do, I've changed my Google to, to Muesli. It's an application that kind of replaces all that standard Google images with uh, a daily dose of inspiration that just comes to my screen every morning. And I, I go through it, uh, look at the blog posts, but at the same time, it doesn't just stop there. If you're um, trying to solve a problem for any application, um, the first step I usually do is think about what else is on the web, who else had, might have the same problem, what is their solution, can we learn something from it, does it work for us, and, and kind of work from there. So, you know, really, really fresh approaches, to be honest, and I, and I love that about Mu Muesli, was it? Muesli, yeah. That's a really great, really great idea. I think, to be honest, um, yeah, you guys are doing a great job here at GFK. I think one last question before we wrap this up, guys, is, how, how does this help with your creative approach? <laughs> <laughs> does it help? Uh, uh, I, I guess it helps because uh, it just brings back the memory that we shared on, uh, that was one of our design uh, workshops in Munich and it just brings back the memories when we was in that restaurant um, and it also acts as a timestamp for what was going on within the design team at that period. And I think then, we would, this was the first one we did, so we was really just coming together. Okay. Second time we did it, it was really nice because now we know each other a bit more. So I think the way we're growing now is, is really, the culture is really starting to, to show a bit more. Nice. Yeah. Cool. Well, Team UX, bring it in. Come oh, on, let's yeah, have a high, nice. high five. Group, group high five. Group high five. Nice. Yeah. Thank you for watching. We hope you enjoyed the video. For our latest content, click here. For our website and social media channels, click here. And if you could like, thumbs up, comment and subscribe below, that'd be great. See you in the next video.